I became involved in glass recycling technologies in 1991 when I worked for a state agency supporting the development of alternative glass recycling applications. A colleague and I created a database of something like 80 potential applications for recycled glass, considering its physical qualities rather than its traditional uses. That document was later published by the National Institute for Standards and Technology. I have no idea whether it still exists, but I can probably scare up a copy if anyone cares. Many of the applications we found were trite substitutions of glass for aggregate, like using crushed glass as sand or rock. These kinds of applications are almost never sustainable because sand and rock are still pretty plentiful and cheap in the United States but they periodically crop up anyway as people continue to reinvent the wheel and local news people don't know any better. But one application did get my attention. As a mechanical engineer involved in energy issues since the 1970s, we found technical articles from the 70s testing the use of crushed recycled glass in brick manufacturing. It made sense to me since the glass company invests a lot of energy into heating mined minerals to temperatures exceeding 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit to create glass. Then once it's glass, it can be remade into other forms at temperatures 1,000 degrees cooler and much more quickly. So the use of glass in ceramics manufacturing has the potential to show significant energy and therefore monetary savings. I performed some research sponsored by the state of California that was published as this article. Rather than reproducing it here, I'll just give you the link. One of the important points in this article is that it's important to use a wide range of gradations of glass with the clay. If you use only fines, it's hard to avoid cracking and bloating. If you use only coarse, you won't get the advantage of the low temperature fusing of the glass. So, we're using, so you're using glass as both a grog and powder with clay. I gave workshops where I call this the principle of reactive aggregate. By that, I mean to communicate the idea that during forming, the glass acts as a grog and reduces the chance of, of, of drying cracks, while at high temperatures, the glass becomes the source of final fired strength. Another important point is that you have to use glass as at least 50% by weight of the dry materials because otherwise you won't form the glassy network needed to take advantage of glass's properties. Glass can be used in tile manufacturing as well. I made some tiles that Andy Balmer, a glaze expert, glazed beautifully in single firing at Cone 06. Glass can even be used in throwing. This pot was thrown using 67% dirty mesh and finer crushed glass. Here's a stack of bricks I made during the experimenting for the article I described above. I'm going to let that article above speak for itself. What I wanted to communicate in this video is that glass, properly used, is a viable industrial ceramic raw material. Please remember that the next time you read in the paper that some local genius has invented the idea 